Hi, Franklin Falcons. It's Miss Rachel here. So we are just ending um, Women's History Month, even though it's always a great time to learn about amazing women in history and the trailblazers that have allowed women to have the rights they have today um, as we still fight for women's rights. But it's also um, Gloria Steinem's birthday this week on March 25th. So I wanted to share with you this read aloud um, that I read in class and that I hope other Franklin Falcons can enjoy as well. It's, it's called Gloria's Voice, the story of Gloria Steinem, feminist, activist, and leader. I wonder if you've heard any of those words before. This is Gloria. She has big dreams. She dreams of being famous and of being a hero who helps people all over the world. Her mama had a dream once too. She dreamt of leaving their small town and doing something big. She dreamt of being a journalist in New York City. But as a wife and a mother, Gloria's mama had to stay home and take care of the family. That's what women were expected to do. That's just the way things were. Gloria thinks this is very unfair. How do you feel about that? Do you think it's fair that women would have to stay home and take care of the family instead of pursuing their dreams? When Gloria was 10 years old, her parents decided to live in separate homes. They are very different and their differences make it hard to live together. Gloria misses her papa who travels for business, but the hardest part is when mama falls ill and can no longer take care of Gloria or herself. Sometimes it's as if Gloria is the grown up and her mama is the child. Deep down in her heart of hearts, Gloria wishes her mama had followed her dreams. Gloria grows up. She feels ready to leave her small town and do something big. She dreams of going to New York City, but first she wants to travel like her father. So Gloria decides. So Gloria journeys across the ocean to India. She travels with only a sari, a cup, and a comb. She sees beautiful sights, but also a lot of suffering. There is inequality between the rich and the poor, and there are war in the vi villages. Gloria joins an, AIDS, an aid team that holds meetings for villagers. They come and talk about their fears, and Gloria listens. Thank you, they say, and bring her gifts of rice. We never thought anyone from the outside cared. Gloria is overjoyed knowing that she is making a difference in people's lives. They mentioned that she brought a sari, a cup, and a comb. Can you use the picture to figure out what a sari is? After two years in India, Gloria decides it's time to go to New York City and land the dream the land of dreams and possibilities. Gloria wants to keep helping people, just as she did in India. She becomes a journalist. She hopes to report on people and their struggles. Do you know what a journalist does? Have you ever seen a newspaper or read something online? Journalists report on things that are happening around the world or in your city or in the news. Yet, at the magazine she works for, Gloria is asked to write about hair and beauty products and stockings. These are fun, but not the kind of issues Gloria is passionate about. Gloria feels like a typewriter without a ribbon. A typewriter is what people use before computers. Miss Rachel doesn't know it super well, but maybe you can ask um, an older relative. She realizes that even in New York, the opportunities for men and women are for women are limited because the people in charge are all men. They give most of the interesting assignments to other men. They leave little room for women's voice. And Gloria wants to be heard. Gloria has a friend who knows of her wish to become a serious journalist. One day he asks her if she could report on a new group of women, a new group called the Women's Liberation Movement. Gloria is curious. She learns that women who belong to this movement call themselves feminists. They want to help other women. 
They believe that women can be in charge and work at the same jobs and have the same opportunities as men. They want to give women a voice. Gloria is inspired. She realizes that, just like her, women everywhere want to be heard, and she believes that she can give them a voice. Gloria asks her fearless friend Dorothy for help. She hopes that if they speak out for equality together, people will listen. Dorothy can't wait. The two travel all over the country. They give speeches about women's rights. They talk about respecting all people, no matter what they look like or where they came from. Be strong and be proud of who you are. Gloria wants to spread the word even more about feminism and equality. But how? She wonders. Then Gloria has a big idea. Hmm. How is she going to spread the word? How is she going to tell people all across America and all over the world about fe feminism and that people should be treating women equally? To make her idea happen, Gloria knows that she'll need many people to come together. With the help of Dorothy and other friends, Gloria starts a new kind of magazine. It's all about women, and only women are in charge. They call it Ms. Magazine. Ms. Magazine gives women a voice. Gloria is excited to see Ms. out in the world, but she's also scared. She wonders what people will think. They're not used to seeing this kind of magazine. They're not used to seeing women in charge. Many news reporters speak out against Gloria's ideas. They predict that the magazine will fail, but it doesn't. In fact, it's a smash hit. The magazines fly off newsstands. People want to hear what women have to say. Gloria is delighted. The magazine's success gives her hope, hope that all doors will be open to women, hope that there will be equality between women and men. I'm a hopeaholic, she says. Gloria knows there is still a lot of work to be to do before her dream, her hopes become reality. She has big dreams and she has only just begun. And then it says, never stop dreaming. So that's our story about Gloria Steinem. I'm gonna read a little biography that the book has at the end. Gloria, Gloria Marie Steinem was born on March 25th, 1934 in Toledo, Ohio to Ruth and Leo Steinem. Leo, a traveling businessman, often took the family with him on his travels. Gloria and her sister Susan, nine years her senior, that means nine years older, did not attend school during those times. After her parents' divorce in 1944, Gloria lived with her ailing mother until she was a senior, until her senior year in high school, when she moved to Washington, D.C. to live with Susan. She then followed in her sister's footsteps to Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. After graduating with honors, Gloria spent two years in India on a fellowship before moving to New York City in 1960. In 1971, she co-founded Ms. Magazine and became recognized as a leader and media spokesperson for the feminist movement. She has since traveled widely while advocating for women's rights and equality. In 2005, Gloria co-founded the Women's Media Center along with Jane Fonda and Robin Morgan. The Women's Media Center is an organization that makes women visible and powerful in the media. Gloria has written many books and received numerous awards for her writing. One of her most well-known books is Outrageous Acts and Everyday Rebellions, a collection of essays about women and their struggles for equality. In 2013, she was honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her contribution to women's rights. Today, Gloria continues to travel internationally as a lecturer and organizer and promotes issues of equality and peace around the world. In addition to her interest in, gen in gender and race, Gloria fights against child abuse and advocates for indigenous peoples. When she is not on the road, she lives in New York City. I hope that you enjoyed this story. I hope that you're more curious about the feminist movement and Gloria's work. And maybe you've heard the word feminist before and um, the fight for equality. 
in our class, we talked a little bit about how not everybody has the same rights and how it is unfair and what we can do um, to combat that. What can you do, even if you're only five or 10, to uh, make sure that everybody is treated equally? Can you be an upstander when you see people acting unfair? It might be a kid, but it also might be an adult. Thanks for listening, Franklin Falcon. See you soon.